And there's so many records here that I have no idea what they are. Andrash Fox is my solo instrumental project. It's like this weird tension between machinic dance music stuff and really natural organic themes. You're watching to Strange Holiday on Triple R. My name's Andrash. Well, it's fine. across the room. The radio is, is, a, is a really indulgent and great way to make collecting records feel worthwhile because you're sharing it with people. Now, JBD, don't forget that the radio on show is just meant to be like a normal show, but a little bit more fun, so don't feel like you have to finish on time today. <laughs> no, I, I think the Strange Holiday listeners, the favourite part of the show is the two minutes of your show. But they get to hear on the on demand. <laughs> It cross-pollinates in a strong way, like Triple R gives me access to this community of other musicians in Melbourne, and that helps me keep doing what I'm doing. There we go. Nozu is um, a, a false genre that I made up called Heat Beat, and Nozu is also a complicated setup to describe to most people, in the sense that it's, uh, well, it began as a recording project for weird funk kind of based songs. And then it became uh, need to play this thing live kind of thing and simple uh, musical dreams of having a big nightclub Las Vegas style band, like a James Brown kind of band. It's the dumbest thing in the world, but it's just the feeling of euphoria or a certain level of energy. There's nothing to it because it's just doing it without thinking. Yeah, that's the heat beat. <laughs> fireworks from the city and shit, because it's, the city is just that. There was a swimming carnival at our school and we made a DJ mix for it one night and that was the first time we ever did anything. I guess like, I don't know, a year or two after we made that mix, <laughs> we, um, we'd play house parties like probably once a month. That's what we did for like two years straight. Yeah, and that's how we started and since then have been doing much the same. <laughs> Oh, while living down here in Frankston. We make music, we run a record label, we orchestrate live shows and we run events <laughs> under Sleep Day and Butter Sessions. <laughs> We've got the studio up in Abbotsford now, but being down here as well, there's a lot less distractions, a bit more peaceful, I think, as well. And like, my room's pretty small it's, and gets fucking, too hot as well. Gets too hot up upstairs, there. And yeah. So. Well, I guess the garage is, um, it only really came into play when, um, when we were writing a live set for an animal's dancing party. I guess um, for us, you know, it's like we're just having it's fun and work. coming up with stupid things like the, like animals dancing. The name came from um, a Google search, like Miles Googled animals dancing. And I thought it was hilarious that he Googled animals dancing instead of dancing animals. And then I made a sticker and <laughs> <laughs> the rest totally is totally unrelated. <laughs> <laughs> so we had this sticker and a Google search. And then this is actually literally how it happened. And then we were like, oh, we, let's do these parties. And we're like, have we, got, we haven't got a name. And I was like, well, let's just call it Animals Dancing. And then it was ridiculous enough to work, so we did it. I think, yeah, originally we wanted to book DJs who would play extended sets for basically the, you know, the whole night. People weren't bringing out the acts that we wanted, so we started bringing out the acts that we wanted. People yeah, didn't want to do something right. so we put it out ourselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So people weren't making t-shirts with bears on it, so we made it ourselves. Do ourselves. We're, not as, we're not as deep as you, as you take us for. <laughs> really? 
Cool, we're good to go. I think there's a real strong desire to turn whatever we digest here in Australia into an Australian interpretation of something. The obsession with Australianisms or whatever is just because I think there's a really rich potential here and those things sound better in this environment. Those guitar sounds and those chords and rhythm structures seem to work well when you're driving out in the bush. I think we're very different than anyone else that I can think of, but we also share some kind of approach or appreciation for a certain types of music or an open-mindedness. I think we sit on our own. <laughs> the odd thing about that is I think everybody that we kind of collaborate with is also an outsider. So to collaborate and be an outsider is kind of an oxymoron, but I think that's part of what binds everybody. Nobody's emulating anyone else. There's been a lot healthier live performance scene for electronic music in the last three or four years in Melbourne. I think that's also just our current generation growing up a little bit and becoming more settled in what they do and stepping up and actually trying to do things with it, like put out their own records or run shows. We weren't getting asked to play anywhere, so I guess we just had to put our own parties on. Spaces that we heard of or saw and, and, and certain music that in those spaces means something different than what it would in a club. It's like, I'm not gonna sit here and say we turned, you know, all these kids into listening to fucking dance music. It's more the fact that they were up for it and interested in it that allowed it to happen. And the same thing with all the other people in Melbourne that are, you know, launching labels, putting music out, throwing parties. It's a simple countercultural thing, really, I think. A movement for real connection as opposed to forced connection. Yeah, it's it's a bit a bit of fun, a bit dangerous. Because, I mean, it's not like what we're doing is anything different to what's already been done in Melbourne. But, no, I mean, all the stuff that we do is a bit of a piss take. Because we don't take ourselves too seriously. No. You know, like, look, bar, that's a pretty stupid idea. But it's fucking <laughs> Absolutely. sick, isn't it? Yeah. Number one record on Juno. <laughs> Well, I guess, like, we, the music thing we take seriously in the rest. Of <laughs> <laughs> like, we're serious about who we choose to play. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But we, yeah. And that's nothing else really matters. I think the great potential offered by Melbourne for dance music currently is that we don't have the same legacy of this long-running history of like a Berlin underground minimal techno kind of sound or whatever. We're kind of a bit more free to be a bit weird or do our own thing. 
And that's, you know, where an island continent that's far away, that's usually the places where you get the most fucked up evolution of animals and species and stuff. And that's kind of probably what's happened with the music stuff here. Yes, when someone gets success or someone does something unique, then, you know, there's four other guys who saw that and then in two years' time will be, you know, almost at that point. So the more people are pushing new stuff and doing cool things, like, it's just making even more people want to get into it. Maybe that's why it's, you know, it's interesting because, you know, we have a self-deprecating culture in Australia, which is kind of refreshing in dance music. And people always think of Australia, obviously, the stereotype. That there are kangaroos. Yeah, it's in not just kookaburras and all the tracks of didgeridoos. <laughs> <laughs> <That's so laughs> <mate. laughs> These kookaburras weren't even meant to be. That was just in the window. Yeah, that was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Trying to make a tune. <laughs> <laughs>